Hi, everyone. I'm your host, Charlene Turk, and welcome to Digital Champions, where we speak to some of the most innovative thinkers in the digital space. And joining us today from Thousand Oaks, California, is Tony Winders with the Winders Group. Tony, thank you so much for joining us today on Digital Champions. Hi, Charlene. Thanks for having me. So tell us what you're doing over there at the Winders Group. Well, the Winders Group is a B2B technology marketing agency, and we are taking a unique approach to the agency model. We're a agency collective hybrid. So we have a full-time team that is administering the resources of a much larger network of marketing professionals all over the world. And we're helping technology companies stand up virtual marketing departments and helping these tech companies grow through demand generation and content marketing. And we're bringing jobs to independent marketing professionals. And in between, we're doing some great work for these tech companies. And so we're we're, we uh, were virtual long before the pandemic, but we've really leaned into that. And we're not the first collective and not, not the first virtual agency, but the combination of the two and how we're adding this layer of strategy and project management and kind of traditional agency models combined with the collective is kind of uh, the, that's the twist that I think is working for the Winders Group right now. And can you give us an example of a client that comes to you and the needs they have that you address, particularly in your unique space? Sure. Typically, historically, it's been startups that are post A round funded, but not ready to put the marketing executive on their cap table or their management team. So we've had real success in helping companies move from that startup phase to the growth phase of their companies. And so typically a CEO or a head of sales will come to us with the, the needs from early positioning and messaging and creating strategy that communicates their value proposition and their brand narrative to their target audience, even developing who that audience is and creating buyer personas and doing market landscaping and competitive analysis. And then we take that strategic direction and apply it to content creation, which could be everything from a brand identity to the corporate website, to a pitch deck or a sales for investor or for sales. Uh, and content for us rolls all the way through to infographics, white papers, eBooks, social media graphics, ad, ad advertising content. And so then that content we will put into campaigns, be it outbound demand gen email campaigns, public relations campaigns, the display advertising campaigns. So we kind of think of the business and our, how we serve these tech companies in those three pillars of strategy, content, and campaigns. And Tony, how'd you end up in the niche of tech? Well, I actually started one of the first digital marketing agencies in the world in the mid 90s. I, I got the internet bug pretty early in 1993 and really moved my career in that direction. So we were doing digital marketing when, I mean, we were inventing search engine marketing as we went. We created some of the first display banner ads back in the mid nineties uh, for all the networks and studios and the dot-com companies. And so after the dot-com bust, I transitioned my career into the digital advertising space. And for a long time was the head of marketing at digital ad platforms like Search123, which was acquired by ValueClick and is now called Conversant. So I was the head of marketing at ValueClick for many years. And then most my most recent corporate job was at GumGum, which is still doing some really innovative things in computer vision and, and digital advertising. And between the corporate gigs, I would, I would consult as a CMO for hire and more recently decided I wanted to build another agency and take all that learning and apply it to where we are today in technology marketing. And on that note, you said where we are today. Can I ask you where in your experience do you think we're going to be in the next couple of years? And what are the things in your platforms that we should be on the lookout for that you already got your eye on because you're so innovative? Well, what, I mean, technology seems to never plateau. So, I mean, and, and good, good for all of us, I suppose. I think the one thing that I have my eye on is the machine learning and the artificial intelligence and the, the, the use of data. I mean, we've been talking about big data for years, but the, 
the real applications of machine learning and predictive analytics in digital advertising are more real than ever. And I feel that we're at a point where we can innovate again. I mean, it just feels very, uh, it just feels very late nineties to me in terms of some of the, <laughs> the technology that we're seeing in, in digital advertising and, and the programmatic ad space, ironically, mm-hmm. it sort of started as publishers selling ads to advertisers and then ad networks emerged and scooped up all that ad inventory and made it available and accessible to advertisers. And then this whole ecosystem built up around digital advertising to where all the there are all these middlemen and all these different players that are do, adding value and have added value along the way, like fraud detection and, and SSPs and exchanges <laughs> and DSP. The, now, what I see coming is that the all those middlemen and all those additional players are going to be decoupled and it's going to go back to end-to-end programmatic between the publishers. They're going to have a lot more control. We, we, there's a lot of discussion right now around Google eliminating third-party cookies yeah. from the ecosystem. Yeah. We see that as a huge opportunity for publishers hmm. to control more of their destiny, actually. So... We're going through that transition in the advertising space right now, but on the other side of that, publishers are going to be way more in control of their data and they're going to be able to use that to their advantage, we think, through some of the programmatic um, AI and machine learning technologies that we're seeing come down with through companies like our client Pubwise, for example, is really leading that charge um, at the moment. Tony, I am going to have to wrap you here. Unfortunately, we've got to wrap up. We've run out of time. But like, seriously, we could listen to you. And the minute you said bring back the late 90s, you had me there. And Tony, thank Uh you so much for joining us and sharing so much wisdom with us on Digital Champions. A lot of fun, Charlene. Thank you very much. Oh, it was our pleasure. And if you'd like to learn more about what they're doing over there at the Winders Group, you can check them out on dailyadbrief.com. I'm Charlene Shirk. That's going to do it for us today on Digital Champions. And we look forward to learning something new with you next time. Simplify presents Addressable CTV, combining the power of TV with the targeting and attribution of digital. Simplify's Addressable CTV delivers massive reach with the ability to scale without sacrificing precision. TV buyers can generate incremental reach with household level targeting, frequency controls, reporting, and insights. To learn more about Simplify's Addressable CTV and what it can do for your clients, visit simply.fi.